Here we are in what used to be the kitchen of Station House at Tannerbalk. Uh, it was originally the ladies waiting room which is why there's a doorway there and a doorway in the living room next door which used to be the uh, gentlemen's waiting room. Uh, originally the building only went as far as this wall here and it was extended in 1911 with a couple of bedrooms over here to turn this into a house whereupon the waiting room was through that doorway there and this would have been your kitchen and, and, and living room area. Originally almost certainly there would have been a cast iron range in this hole here and we're hoping to replace that with uh, a suitable one that we're hoping that we'd be able to acquire from a property in Blina Fistiniog. Uh, as you can see, a lot of the original features remain. Uh, lovely tongue and groove uh, boarding on the walls and the ceiling. And in this room, the original uh, ceiling rose survives, which it doesn't next door. So that's something else we'll have to make. Um, we are hoping that this will become, once again, the kitchen dining room for the property. There will be obviously a, uh, a, a modern kitchen made to look antique fitted over here. There will be a dining facility here. The floor will have to come up and be relayed because it's uneven and it's done with modern tiles and we want to bring this into uh, a replica 1911 condition. Right, so this is what used to be the main waiting room and latterly the refreshment room for the station. Uh, once again, as in the kitchen, you've got the original features hiding underneath the wood chip wallpaper are the wall boards. This wall here is a later addition and that will be coming out because we want to restore this room to its full size and we also want to put a uh, a cast iron and slate fireplace in its original position which is on the wall which is now part of the hallway. Then this will all be uh, restored, we'll have to put new windows in, uh, underneath the polystyrene tiles as you can see here there's more of the tongue and groove boarding and we'll be wishing to restore that and then finally it will be furnished in the 1911 style to make it a rather more unique experience than just an ordinary holiday land. On the top of the tongue and groove and a rather substantial form of filler in the gaps and all of this will have to be cleaned off and renovated to bring the woodwork back into its original state. Quite a job. Here in the hallway you can see the same tongue and groove, uh, this time covered in plasterboard. Once again that will all have to come off. Down on the floor here you can see a section of board that has been replaced where the hearth of the fireplace used to be, that used to be here. The flue goes up to the chimney through the thickness of the wall and that fireplace will be replaced uh, with a traditional painted slate surround and cast iron insert. That we are hoping will be a working feature. Right, here we are in the bathroom. Um, this started life as the gents urinal uh, and toilet facilities to the adjoining waiting room which is behind this rather solid structure here. Uh, the bathroom is quirky I would say. Um, it might be a bit irritating if you were living here long term but for a couple of weeks stay I'm sure people will enter into this spirit. Uh, Obviously all of the current fittings will be going, high quality fittings will replace them. There will be a shower in addition to the bath. So modern uh, bathroom facilities in an ancient box. And here we are in the master bedroom, as you can see, uh, rather compact, cosy, I suppose you could describe it as. Uh, still has the original cast iron fireplace, which we will be retaining. We'll take it out, clean it up, put it back. Uh, there is substantial weathering of the plasterwork uh, which will be repaired and renewed using traditional lime materials. Once again we will replace the window with uh, uh, something that replicates what we believe the original to be. These are not the originals um, but we do have a number of photographs that we can work from. Then this once again will be furnished in the Edwardian style. It will be compact, but then for the purposes of a holiday let, 
when you're not necessarily storing a lot of junk in the place, it should be ideal. And here we are in the smaller of the two bedrooms. Um, we are proposing to put bunk beds in here, which will enable two people to stay if they are very friendly with each other. Um, but otherwise, of course, you could use the bottom bunk as a single. We simply haven't got room to put anything else in here. It is a very small room. Once again, we have damage to the plaster work, which will have to be repaired using traditional materials. Over here, we have what we believe is the original 1911 fit sash window. It still works. There is some rot at the bottom, but this will be a repair rather than a replacement because we have sufficient original material here to do that. We are looking to retain as much of the original fabric and character of this building as we possibly can. So anything that can be repaired will be repaired. Anything that we have to renew, either because it's missing or because it's no longer in a satisfactory condition, we will do with using traditional methods and traditional materials. Right, here we've got the Welsh Pony, which uh, has made quite a bit of progress in the last few uh, weeks. Um, we've got paid full-time staff working on the job, and also we've got a volunteer gang um, who've been coming in at weekends and uh, progressing stuff as well. There's just been a weekend working party on the loco and uh, they've fitted some more of the um, boiler cladding um, and they've made, done some foot plating work around the back. Uh, the other thing that's uh, happened is that uh, smoke box has been put together, um, a stainless steel smoke box, which is what we do as a standard for certainly the smaller locos now, because although the material costs a little bit more, we've found that uh, it lasts much, much better than ordinary mild steel construction. So the smoke box shell is there. Um, the, uh, the outer frames and the buffer beams, which are original parts, they've all been um, reassembled and finally fitted. Um, We've got, uh, we've got uh, the brake gear is, uh, is fitted, you can see here. Um, so there's a stretcher and carrying the brake blocks. There's just um, a pair on the loco. Um, the, obviously being rod coupled, if you apply braking to this one wheel, it's effectively braking through the leading wheel set as well. Okay, we've got the original re re reverter here, which has been uh, rebuilt. It's uh, a bit bits of wastage dealt with, and the, uh, the different notches um, uh, welded up and filed and made good again. Um, and that's been been trial fitted, and that uh, connects by this long reversing rod. So the reversal will sit about there in the cab, the reversing rod comes along here and operates the valve gear through this crank arm here. So that's ready for final assembly. And then there's some more bits here which are ready to go. There's uh, rod brasses which are finished. Um, and uh, this is one of the original vacuum brake cylinder uh, mounting brackets, trunnions, which that sits in this this corner of the cab. That's uh, that's ready to fitting, ready for fitting, along with the the brake cylinder itself, which has been rebuilt and is is ready to go. Here's the uh, new coupling and connecting rods for Welsh Pony. There's the uh, coupling rod. Sorry, connecting rod, <laughs> coupling rod. See, they've all been uh, nicely polished up and finished off, ready to go. You saw the brasses earlier, so these now can be basically uh, just assembled onto the onto the loco. Here we've got the new boiler for the James Spooner. Um, as you can see, it's looking fairly complete now. Uh, most of the welding work is now finished. Um, there's uh, a final bit to do up here. There's a, a compensating ring 
to be welded on around there. Um, but other than that, pretty much all the all the welding is done. And then the next step will be doing things like uh, finally making and fitting the, the washout plugs, um, riveting all along here, along the foundation ring. Um, then we'll be able to fit the the tubes and the flues, um, which will largely complete the the boiler itself. Uh, so we'll then be able to do a, a hydraulic test on it, which of course the boiler inspector will want to come and witness to make sure there's no leaks and no undue deflections. So say so it's got uh, got quite a number of interesting features this boiler compared to previous ones we've done it's got uh, these are the stays which are fillet welded on the outside uh, sort of continental style which we believe is going to be a great improvement um, the proportions of the boiler overall are such that if we needed to it would fit in place of one of the Hunslet boilers um, that are fitted in the, the Merthyn Emrys or the Earl of Marianneth. So overall it's the same size as that, um, but it has different features, improvements on those 1968 Hunslet boilers. It's got a tapered section here, obviously at the other end which is similar to the David Lloyd George's boiler. Uh, but the design of the inner firebox with its girder bars is more like the, the Hunslet boiler. Um, so what we've done is effectively designed a boiler that is, uh, has the best features from all our existing designs and will replace, if necessary, the boiler that's in the Merlin Emrys and indeed if somebody so wished, they could put one in the Earl of Merioneth sometime in the probably distant future, should they wish to. So this is the smoke box tube plate, um, same at both ends of the boiler. Um, these two big holes are where the superheater flues will be fitted, so they'll be uh, expanded tightly into place at this end and at the other end of the firebox um, and the superheated elements will run into these flues um, which will be uh, so hot gases will be passing up the flue when the loco is in service and the elements which are sitting in here will be heated in the hot gas coming all the way along the boiler so that's the essence of the, the superheating Small holes are for the ordinary smoke tubes, as they're called. Um, and this flange up here will carry the main steam pipe, which uh, will be fitted in here and go along to the dome of the loco, where it'll meet the, the regulator valve. So live steam from the boiler will pass out of here into a superheater header, which will be fitted in this area here through the superheater flues, be superheated, and then pass back to the header, a separate part of the superheater header, and then out to the bottom of the smoke box, down to the cylinders. Here's the, uh, the boiler tubes. Um, you can see the, uh, the specification of the material is, is on there. Um, it's because it's come from a, a supplier that specialises in that sort of um, industrial tube and this is the particular boiler specification material. Um, these are cut to length obviously to fit our boiler and if you look carefully you can see at this end, this section here, is just slightly larger in diameter than, than here. And this slightly larger end goes at the smoke box end of the boiler. And the reason it's done like that is so that when when we come to change the tubes in 10 years time um, 
having a large, slightly larger diameter here means when the tubes are pulled out this way, um, the, the, the tube instead of dragging all the way along at the same diameter through the hole, uh, as soon as it's moved about that far, you'll be dragging a smaller diameter through the hole, which makes it much easier to get out. So that's why this expansion at this end is done. And this expansion is done for us by the supplier. And down here you can see the, the four superheater flues. Obviously two for each end. Um, again, there's a smaller diameter at the uh, firebox end this time. So this end will go in the firebox and then there's a larger diameter again at this end. Right, here we've got a complete uh, laser cut steel set of parts to build the uh, the water tanks and coal bunkers for the, for the James Spooner. Um, they've been uh, modelled up in 3D form and then 2D drawings produced to have all these pieces laser cut by a, a firm up in northwest England um, and where they need to be they've been folded um, appropriately in, in the right shape uh, so this is a curve of a round the top of the tank you can see there and similarly down here um, you can see the, the plate with all the holes in that's a that's a template for sticking dummy rivets onto the tanks when they're finished so here's a complete uh, kit of parts all stacked up which will be fabricated together um, to produce the, the the complete items so these will be MIG welded here um, and probably I would guess these might be started to be assembled early next year, something like that, I should think. Yeah, so these, these two plates here, which are curved around, this, this is the top of the driver's side tanks. They haven't got a bunker cut out in them. Um, and you can see here where the water tank filler will sit, which is a, it's an original iron casting um, which we've uh, we've got the pattern for, we've got some new castings and that'll bolt on there. Here we've got the cradle frame for James Spooner. Here's all the uh, reversing gear bits and the handbrake bits. Um, this bit for instance is the this is the screw thread for the handbrake, the nut that operates on it. Um, so that's a, just a parking brake for when the loco's out of steam needs a purely mechanical parking brake so that sits up here on the fireman's side of the loco um, basically just works via a, a pull rod to the brakes on one bogey um, the normal braking when the loco is in service is uh, via a, a steam brake and that uh, operates a brake cylinder down there in the back end of each each bogey. So both bogies are braked in normal service but the parking brake just acts on one end. These are the cranks and arms. Um, we'll sit in these uh, bearings here which are modern style plumber block bearings. Um, they carry the reversing gear operated on the from the reverser um, and then rod going each way up to this um, an arm on this shaft and then there'll be another pair of rods going down to the center of the bogey actually operating the brake gear the reversing gear on the bogey itself they've all been finished trial fitted onto the cradle um, and then it's all been dismantled uh, so that uh, could have a first coat of paint so it's got this gray primer on be more painting to do and then the handbrake gear and the reversing gear can go back on and that'll be 
ready for the boiler to be fitted once the, once the boiler is ready. Mm -hmm.